This is a 1991 Toyota Land Cruiser J70. The J70 series is the platform code for it. Uh, in the USA, we got the FJ40, which was the Land Cruiser sold up until, or a Land Cruiser that was sold up until the early 80s, which was a smaller, more off-road, serious type of uh, truck versus the Land Cruisers that we know and see these days, which are basically four-door luxury variants of it. The J70 series was a replacement for the FJ40 series, and not necessarily FJ, that's what we got in the United States, but Toyota labels their platforms by engine code first, so the F in the J40 stood for the F series engine. Uh, elsewhere in the world they got the B series engines, usually diesels, so you'll have BJ40. Following that line, uh, this one specifically in front of me is a PZ J70. PZ standing for the PZ engine, which is a five-cylinder, straight five, non-turbo diesel engine. Yeah, it's kind of weird, a five-cylinder. The other engine around this time is the HZ, which is a straight six non-turbo diesel engine. Um, the J70 was never sold in the United States. Um, Canada, they still make this worldwide. Um, Canada, the mining union something, whatever it is up there, does still buy J70 series land cruisers and they use them as mining vehicles. So if you're in Canada, you can get a new J70, but they're beat to hell because they're, well, mine vehicles. And they uh, keep track of them, it's not with miles, but hours run. It's a little hour meter that just ticks up. However, this one is imported from Japan, so it's right-hand drive. Um, it is a short wheelbase version, so it's squashed. There is, there's different terms that people use for these, but from what I can tell, there's a medium wheelbase version, and they usually have the FRP tops, they're fiberglass, get a little longer, still two-door, um, the proportions make a little more sense though because all J70 Land Cruisers from the back of the door to the front are identical. So regardless, regardless if it's got the little short ass on it, the medium ass, or it's a four door long version or a pickup truck for that matter, they're all going to be the same front. So when you look at a short one like this, it looks a little proportionally off, but that's because this hood is meant to take the HZ straight six diesel engine so it's the same shape, just with a little short butt on it. Uh, there's a couple other options that make this one special, I guess, when it comes to J70. It has front and rear locking differentials and, of course, locking hubs. Uh, the hubs are automatic. The, there's also a convertible version, which I believe is a short wheelbase version like this, except it'll be cut off right about here and then you know like a jeep it'll have the fabric top that comes off and then these doors back here are cut so this will be just a plastic sheet that goes with the fabric top or canvas top uh so this one has the front and rear locking differentials automatic locking hubs or push button um it's a five-speed manual as well and it has fantastic air conditioning which is great for Florida, especially now that summer's coming. It's a, said earlier, it's a straight five non-turbo diesel engine, so it isn't particularly quick, but it's plenty fast. Before this, I was driving a 1985 Daihatsu Rugger, which was a turbo. Uh, that's a 2.8 liter turbo engine. This one is a 3.5 liter non-turbo engine. Uh, and comparing the Rugger and the Land Cruiser, this is far more solid like the way this feels as far as like the doors and the switches and just how it handles itself it feels like it's carved out of a single block of granite it feels about as heavy and about as slow too um, but once you get up to speed it's fine um, other things about the 70 series at least of this generation is it has leaf springs all the way around and solid axles front and rear um, the 70 series is meant more for the serious type off-road 
reliability, simplicity sort of aspect of things. Whereas the J80, which is a, like the round Land Cruiser that was sold in the US, and the J100, which is the replacement for that, and I don't know what the designation of the new ones are. Um, but they've slid more towards on-road handling and comfort, where this is, well, meant to trudge around the woods or up mountains or whatever it is. Here in Florida, I drive it around town because it just looks cool. It's a Toyota Land Cruiser, but it's far more vehicle than I need. But hey, that's the standard uh, automotive purchase in the United States these days, huh? Because this is a replacement for the J40, it kept certain design cues. So the front here, round headlights, front fenders with the little lip, and then the side marker indicators. And you can see them from the side too. So you don't need a separate sort of piece. Um, what else? Well, it's in fantastic shape. As you can see, there isn't, for being as old as it is, everything here is clean, solid. There's no fill. It has been repainted once, the front. I don't know if this will show up, but you can see. Repainted the original white, and there's a slight dent right here. Um, repainted okay. It's easy to paint a vehicle poorly in white if it was originally white and not mess anything up. So it doesn't distract from it at all, and you have to really look for it. Here's the rear left side. Everything is in really good shape. It was taken care of, but it's also a Land Cruiser, so it wasn't necessarily babied. Here's this real rear wheel well. And the uh, running boards and doors and everything are good too. These are the original 16 inch wheels. Um, it came when I got it off of the boat. Um, it had winter tires on it, which were terrible. So I just put these BF Goodrich KO2s. I like keeping things mostly original and I think this fills out pretty well. Um, and white letters complement a white vehicle very nicely. Um, the chrome is in pretty good shape. It's just worn. There's nothing cracked or broken about it. Uh, I think, actually, I don't know if these are supposed to light up or not. But they're here, and I've never seen them light up, so I guess that they just kind of don't. You get this cool little bumper stick, and the whole purpose of this is to tell you where the corner of your truck is as you sit over here. So you can see from right here, it's much further out from the hood. You can see this one because you just stick your face out the window and see. But if you ever see these on Japanese vehicles, that's the point because they usually get very, very close in city driving and things. So you need fine control, I guess, or an indication of where you are. Uh, another artifact of that will be on a lot of the vans. There'll be a little mirror that sticks out and it just points at the ground. And the whole purpose of that one is when you're sitting and you look back, that tells you exactly where your bumper is so you can back up and get very, very close to things. Um, the spare, I don't think this is the original spare. Based on how this is, this is a Desert Dueler tire. I'm assuming at some point, whoever had this before, used the original wheels to mount their winter tires, had these wheels with their summer tires, and I got the spare for the summer because I bought this when it was being sold in the winter. So I don't have the whole set of those aftermarket wheels, but I do have the originals that were mounted on snow tires. Um, well, that's kind of pretty much it for the exterior. It's got some little chrome embellishments um, up here. These windows, you open them from the side, you can open the back and then the whole thing slides forward. Uh, it does have, it is a four-seater, back is kind of cramped. Uh, these are little breathy holes, I guess. Um, there's a vent on the other side, and then there's a couple rubber baffles and things that keeps things out, but it's just a direct hole. Um, it's kind of it. As far as people's reaction to this, um, in comparison to the rugger I had, more non-car people noticed the rugger and liked the rugger. Less 
non-car people see this, and I don't blame them. It just kind of looks like a weird Jeep, and I'm sure most people see it. They go, oh, look at that Jeep, if they even say anything at all. But the people that know what this is and recognize it go ballistic. So they're much more intense reactions when somebody that knows what a Land Cruiser is with the, the J70 series. This is the, you know, this is the Land Rover-ish, Land Cruiser type thing that you'll see trudging along out in the wilderness in Africa and things. It's one of these. Or uh, I guess the UN used these sort of too. So less reactions from non-car people just across the board, but far more intense reactions from the people that recognize what it is. Um, as far as extra, it's an LX model. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, as far as the details from the previous owner, I've got this. Don't know how you would pronounce it, if it's Wacky or Watchy Field. I don't know who or what it is. Uh, this is the only new Toyota badge. Around this time, they started putting this on their trucks and SUVs. I think it's hideous, but it's what Toyota decided to do, so it's there. Much rather have just the block letters. Um, this is a license plate light, so it comes out when you have your lights on. Weight indicator, diesel badge, and uh, something that my rugger didn't have, which is these little plastic caps. The sole purpose of these is to keep water out of the hinge, and there are a couple over here too. It's a nice little attention to detail. Um, you get a Japan Automobile Federation sticker too. I have no idea what that is, how big it is, or what, but it's cool to have. A single exhaust pipe, original Land Cruiser mud flaps, and it's just overall really excellent shape. So let's go inside now. And this will clean up. It's, I daily drive this, I have been for the last month or so. So it's dirty, but meh. A wash will clean that off. So this is the passenger side. As you can see from the quality, dirty, marked, but completely solid. Door opens fine. Uh, roll up windows everywhere. There's no power anything. It does have power steering, power brakes, and air conditioning, like I mentioned earlier, which is in really good shape but no other sort of convenience features. It's very comfortable and very easy to drive, but it drives like you would imagine a purpose-built off-road vehicle would on the street, but a lot better than you'd think. Doors are in good shape, no uh, rust or rot or repainting or reforming or any of that sort of stuff. Cards are good, a little dirty, a little worn, but solid. And the windows roll up just fine. These mirrors are uh, plastic, so the sun hasn't been kind to them, but they've held up really well. Seats are in excellent shape, especially considering how old this is. This is a passenger seat, nice bolsters, it's really clean. Uh, this was a non-smoking vehicle too, so no cigarette burns and no stench, Any, like cigarette smoke stench which is fine, I would have cleaned it up out of it. And it also arrived filthy, because they always do. Uh, the other aspect about the J70 series of this generation anyway, is the dashboard is extremely functional. Um, you have standard vents, and they're the uh, rolly kind, so they're just loose in there. Not loose, but they spin freely. Um, but the dashboard is all metal, or mostly metal, so the Door here, the speaker form, all back here is just metal. Dashboard as well, with the exception of this rubberized plastic bit here, and then the uh, gauge cluster pod for the driver's side, that's plastic. But all the underlying structure is metal. Down here you have the blower motors and everything. Flare, original Toyota Flare too people get a kick out of. Original Land Cruiser mats. Carpet is in excellent shape. Uh, well, I don't know if these are the original Land Cruiser mats. They might have replaced them at some point. Hey buddy. It's uh, my squirrel friend. They might have replaced the mats with the original or OEM replacements because these are in really good shape considering. Uh, and then I've got a, another Land Cruiser with less miles on it that is not as nearly as nice on the inside even for the passengers. So. 
it's a good chance that they replaced those, but the original equipment and well, it's good. Let's go to the driver's side. The same thing for this. Mirror is plastic. It's in a little better shape than the passenger side, but still completely functional. Door card's good. A little worn, a little dirty, stained, but in good shape. The metal and the sill and everything, completely solid. No evidence or any kind of rust or rot or any sort of corrosion whatsoever. Uh, same thing with the window here. Eh. Glass is good. Um, the driver's seat does have wear right here. Uh, it's slightly sunk, but it's mostly the foam has worn away and then there's a metal support bar from, well, what is it, 27 years of going in and out. So this is worn pretty well considering. This upper bolster has wear as well, but it's not collapsed at all, which is nice. And uh, otherwise, it's just clean. And like I said earlier, since it wasn't a smoker's car, um, it's much cleaner than it would be had it been. Again, lanterns are mats. The floor is in really good shape underneath. You do have this wear hole. I'm uh, guessing that's just where they rested their foot when they were driving. Uh, again, OEM replacement mats in pretty good shape. Just a little heel worn here. Pedals are in good shape. Crotch vent down here. Gas door release and hood release. Let's sit inside. Uh, in here, the headliner is like a plastic vinyl sort of texture. Again, owing to its more, I guess, commercial, industrial sort of feel. The um, visors are coated in the same sort of material. Um, missing... Actually, no, I'm not missing. Usually, on a lot of these cars, there'll be like a little rubber stop. But this one's just solidly mounted, so... Yeah, I guess it just doesn't have one. Standard flip up night mode on the rearview mirror. Uh, so in here, original Land Cruiser steering wheel. Getting an original steering wheel with a uh, Japanese import is not always expected. I guess they can change very little about their cars and one of the things they do all the time is get a new steering wheel and they're usually hideous. Um, as far as the gauge cluster, RPM over here. It's a little indicator down here, it says diff lock. The left side of this little picture here is for the front wheels, which is why they're turned. But there's red LEDs underneath each, or in between each, and that's to tell you where your diff lock is. Because down here, you have your diff lock switch. So if you press, lock the rear wheels, switch it even more, you lock the front and the rear. Because you have two locking differentials. This Land Cruiser, or here's the speedometer. It's in everything's in kilometers and everything's metric. So uh, it has two hundred eighty-one thousand four hundred eighty-four thousand kilometers, which is like one hundred eighty thousand miles, something like that. Uh, it's been maintained, and that's not a big deal for a diesel at all. So it doesn't feel like it's that old or it has that many kilometers or miles on it. Um, oil pressure gauge. That doesn't tell you how much oil you have, just simply what the pressure is. Fuel gauge, temperature gauge, and then right here, if this will show up. But uh, the other thing that makes J70s of this vintage special is this is running on a 24 volt system as opposed to a 12 volt system in a normal car. So a normal car you have your single battery, that's a 12 volt battery. All the electricals run on that system at that voltage. This one, however, has two standard 12 volt batteries running in series, so the whole truck is a 24 volt system, which is why this indicator goes to 32 volts instead of whatever it goes to on normal ones. Um, it gives you a lot more amps, I guess, to crank. Useless here, uh, it doesn't make it kind of a pain in the ass to do any sort of electrical work. All the bulbs, the alternator, starter, everything electrical is 24 volt instead of 12 volt. 
so to go into that, this aftermarket head unit, normally on these, when they're imported, there's some sort of step down converter box that converts it down from 12 to, or from 24 to 12 volts, and it's usually stuck somewhere. So you can plug in your devices and things, and whatever accessories you add, you can just plug in that because 24 volt accessories for automobiles are not nearly as common as 12 volt accessories for all the other cars. So because of that, I'm not exactly sure this head unit, if in itself it is 24 volt, or if there's a step down thing buried somewhere in it because it doesn't fit perfectly. It's not recessed into the dashboard at all. So who knows? Uh, you do have electric adjusting mirrors, so this part's physical, but, oh, it doesn't work, the power's not on, but you can adjust them left and right using this switch. Over here, you have your, well, I'm not exactly sure what these are, it's not a choke, but if it's cold, you twist this to feed more fuel into the truck to get it to run better when it's cold. I'm in Florida where it's very warm, so I don't have to worry about that at all. Down here you have your change of filter, and if you're preheating the engine, or the glow plugs I'm pretty sure, uh, indicators, again not anything I have to worry about because the f it had service right before I bought it. This is to lock your hubs, and this is when you're in 4 low, you press this and you'll be in 4 high, because 4 low you crawl extremely slow. Hazards, key lock button windshield wipers, pull and you squirt. Um, does have air conditioning like I mentioned, so it's just this little switch back here. Flip this up, turn your fans on, AC's on. Then you have your standard HVAC controls. Rear wiper, intermittent, on. You press the intermittent, or press the on, and that's how you squirt fluid out of the back. Rear window defroster, clock which works and then again a little label here that says 24 volt so don't plug your standard chargers in here because you'll blow them because the charger is going to expect 12 volt and it's going to get 24. Uh, five speed manual it's standard first second third fourth fifth whoops and then reverses down towards you four wheel drive indicator whoop I'm rolling Uh, in here you have a center cubby, so you lift this and you have just a shallow sort of tray. You lift this tray out and you get a much deeper tray, which we use to keep water in. Now we'll go see the back, which is very cramped. But in a pinch. Uh, so back here, it has an OEM style mat again that says Land Cruiser. Carpet's in very good shape. And the rear seat is in excellent shape. It's just a single bench, no seat belts back here. There we go. So yeah, it's not very comfortable. And this rear seat doesn't adjust at all, so this is what you get. You do get two ashtrays back here. Pretty sure these stickers say something like don't smoke, um, which is good because everything is clean and nice in here. Ocean handles back here as well. Have your windows open like that. All in all, not particularly comfortable, but well, it's a short wheelbase truck, so. Go back to the rear. So the, uh, I think they were J60 Land Cruisers, the 80s ones, the ones that are all up in the Pacific Northwest and everybody likes. Um, I believe they have doors similar to this. So instead of a hatch or a single door that goes any one way, you have these barn door styles. So in order to get in the rear here, you first open the left door. You have your door here, car's in good shape, dirty, and uh, like the rubber and everything is good on the whole truck too. Again, no rot, very clean. Um, anyway, to open up the next door, there's a handle in here. And then you open up this door. And this is as wide as they open. Uh, this door, again, good shape. 
plastic door card. The hinges are good, no rust, no rot. Um, toe hook, I guess. Carpet's pretty good back here, uh, but this we can get to some sort of weirdness that was on this when I got it. So this, well, to lift this seat, you take these headrests off. Pull this. And then you lift it forward. Um, but there's not quite enough room and those seats are fully back so I'd have to go up and move them. But anyway, this will fold forward. And then you take these and you stick them in the bottom here to hold the headrests. Nice. Anyway, as far as weirdness goes, for this specific truck, whoever had this before wanted more room for the rear. So what they did is weld it on this bar, had the catch and the release mechanism tied to this. They bolted it here, that's why this looks non-factory because it isn't. Had this bolted and then down here, this is the OEM position with the OEM cut for the hook that latches into this right here. They moved that here, and then they had cut the carpet, and they had welded on these studs. So this was here, this was here, this was added, and then the bolts down here, they shifted it back. So the rear passengers got more room, except you couldn't fold the seats forward anymore. You had very little cargo room, and now you have these leftover weird hole and just modified bolts so I put that back because it's terrible but I've just left everything else I already said no seat belts back here which is fine whatever um, you do have the original toolkit back here Get the Toyota bag, the original Toyota bottle jack, which works. And then in here, you get a little foldy wedge to keep the truck from rolling back and forth. There's some other things too that didn't belong in the kit, like extra lug nuts or whatever. But you get neat Toyota specific tools. And then this is a big long thing that you put together in order to work the bottle jack. But it's complete, if a little dirty. And to put it back, shove it in there. Stretch the rubber. There. Um, so that's pretty much it for this 1991 five-speed manual four-wheel drive diesel Toyota Land Cruiser. So the other thing to do now is take it for a drive. Actually, first, let's pop the hood and I'll show you. So like I said earlier, um, just before I bought it, it had been serviced, which I'll show you. So here you go. Here's the PZ engine. It's very clean. Timing belt was changed at 218,000 miles. We're at, what was it, 280, I think. So, got about 40,000 miles left. Um, well, I mean, you got your booster, fuel filter, huge ass air filter, washer, radiator, which keeps the truck very cool, even in this heat. Um, the biggest thing underneath this hood that most people would probably point out is the dual batteries running in series. These batteries are new, being replaced in January the 10th, 2018 at 280,300 kilometers. The oil filter, again, new, because it just had service. Air filter's good. And the fuel filter looks like it wasn't changed at that time, but typically you go was it like a hundred thousand kilometers between changing them so hmm. right so that is the end of the walk around for 
this Land Cruiser. So now we'll go for a drive. All right, gonna take this Land Cruiser for a ride. I'm going to um, start it first. So you can hear what it sounds like idling. Sounds great. <clears throat> and I'm going to be riding with the windows up and the AC on. It's just a little too warm and the wind noise. The sensation of driving this is you feel much longer than you actually are because the hood stretches out in front of you so you feel much larger um, and then you look behind you and you go oh my ass is right there and it's perfectly compliant and pleasant to drive on city streets which is all I've ever really driven it in even though it's meant for off-roading and climbing up steep inclines and all that sort of stuff it's actually completely oh, nice to drive around on just surface streets like this. It's very easy to drive. Power steering is nicely boosted. So you can see me driving with one hand. Transmission shifts well. Clutch has got a lot of bite. The throws are pretty long, and the stick kind of feels a little far over there, but you get used to it. AC works really well, even though there's no tinting in here, which if you're somewhere sunny, like Texas or California or Florida, tinting your windows is a matter of keeping the heat out as opposed to just a stylistic thing. None of this is tinted, so this air conditioning has to work a lot harder because the sun is just beating in. It's the beginning of May, so it's not fully into summer yet. It'll be much worse then. But yeah, drive straight. It's a little bumpy, but... Well, not... Not bumpy and more... Um, you can tell that it's an off-roader when you're driving around in streets like this and you just get little small bumps and stuff. It doesn't soak them up as much, but it's still not unpleasant and it doesn't beat you up at all when you're driving. And it'll do 70 miles per hour on the highway, but just, but just. If I make it over there, I'm gonna go a different way than I normally go because, eh. Why not? Um, but this is perfectly capable and acceptable to use on the highway. obviously not the best place for it. It doesn't complement how it's designed or the 
shape of it or any of that sort of stuff. It does remain fairly quiet in here though. And the gearing for it is really short up until you get to the fifth gear. And then you have a bit more stretch. Still, again, about 70 is as fast as you really want to go. It starts to feel strained after that. Um, but because the gearing is so low, sometimes when you're turning corners, you'll be in third gear instead of second, like with most cars with manual transmissions. Brakes work really well. Stop straight. And I was mentioning earlier, um, most people that don't know cars don't pay too much attention to this, but the people that are aware of certain models and certain things recognize it and they're quite happy to see it. Um, had a few people like just driving when they get the windows down and stuff and they're like, oh man, and they kind of like <laughs> take your time up to talk about it, which is fine. I mean, if you're going to have something like this, then you have to absolutely expect that to happen. It's the cost of driving something neat. Uh, fuel economy, just doing this sort of driving, kind of like city stop and go sort of with short drives going about 55 miles per hour for a while. Um, I average about 22 miles to the gallon after it's all calculated out. Not great, but considering I'm a off-roading brick driving around the city, I don't think that's too bad. the dashboard you won't be able to hear. I don't even know if it's going to come through on the camera. But yeah, um, besides sitting on the right and it being a diesel with a stick and being 91, so it's newer than most things like that. It's just a, it's just a truck or a Jeep, I guess, more like it and how it drives. Even though the wheelbase is really short, it's pretty heavy. So it doesn't feel like you're getting blown around or bounced around like it doesn't skip. Um, my Wi-Fi is a uh, 1990 Geo Tracker. And that's about as short. It's just slightly shorter than this. About as wide. And that does that. When you're at speed, it feels like it, it's like darting or it wants to dart. This is really heavy. Something like, I don't want to make up a weight. It's deep into the 3,000 pound range though, I know that. But it's got a, like a differentials and it's ladder frame sitting and all that sort of stuff, so. Um, it's pleasant, pleasant, compliant, and looks rad. That's pretty much it. So uh, I'm just gonna kind of shut up now and drive it. And we will be hitting the highway, so. from right here. That matters.
United States, the uh, Lexus GX series, that one right there. Those are based off of Land Cruiser Prados. The Prado itself started out as a variation of the J70, but with coil sprung suspension instead of leaf springs. Anyway, so we're gonna get on the highway now. of highway driving. So like I said earlier, this isn't quick, but it's plenty fast enough. So you want to get up to speed. Use the on-ramp as much as you can. Visibility is fantastic. And as a matter of course, here in Florida, people like to go a lot faster than they probably should. So I stick to the right. So right now we're going 120 kilometers an hour. Plenty fast to keep up. Temperature's good. Charge is good. Oil pressure's good. Plenty smooth.
another side effect of that is there's enough of these here in the US now that you can order things like oil filters and stuff like that, like normal consumable things, uh, just straight up off Amazon now. The OEM Toyota oil filters are on there. I haven't checked out air filters, but why would they? type of guys is positive they recognize the Land Cruiser and a lot of them are driving Tundras and stuff and have like a Toyota bias I mean Toyota has been around the United States for so long now and there's a definite love of the brand um, yeah it's positive they see it and they go wow oh, I've had <laughs> legitimately two dudes that probably have never used the word before uh, just in general conversation say that this is a beautiful truck And like thumbs up from guys in Jeeps and stuff, so no animosity to it at all. So if that's important to you, at least in the uh, Sun Coast, Florida area, people like it a lot. see it's a boring driving vehicle and just everyday sort of driving traffic but that's a good thing are really good too. I think they might be oversized for the short wheelbase version of it because the drums are like this big, huge. Because again, everything cab forward is identical to all J70s. 
So this one just happens to be hauling a lot less weight around. The power band for it feels really small. Like it runs out of steam at about 3100 RPM. by the way very much not quick but tons of torque series Land Cruisers are extremely popular and well loved worldwide for a reason. Where I am in the United States, much less of a reason. I'm not crawling across the outback. I'm not climbing over mountains. I live in a flat, flat swampland where stuff like front rear locking differentials really won't make that much of a difference. However, visually, the presence it has is super unique and extremely cool looking. With the benefit of it not being a weird truck, it's just a Toyota. Common worldwide, which makes getting parts and service on it quite easy here in the US because you have the entire worldwide network to support you. But they are uncommon here, which adds to that allure. So if you don't want to drive a Jeep, if you don't want to drive a pickup truck, but you would like a diesel and a five speed manual, they, uh, Land Cruiser from Japan is a really nice place to get something. And if you don't like right-hand drive or if you think you don't like it, I can't stress enough how much of a non-issue it is. The biggest issue, I've said it before, is the turn signal stocks. These stocks are switched. So when you're sitting on there, you, you signal with this hand. Over here, you signal with your right. So when I switch from car to car, I'll flip on the wipers instead of signaling and then I go oh yeah and then I'll switch but as far as position and like driving the lanes and stuff it's like I said I can't overemphasize how much of a not even a thing to talk about that is and the reason why you would want to get a Land Cruiser from Japan is because Japan is extremely strict when it comes to vehicle inspections so you know how earlier I was poking around at how clean and in good shape this is? That's a requirement in Japan. That's not something you do because you love your car. It's because you have to. Which is why Japan has the reputation it has for having good old classic type cars. Because we have to wait 25 years before we import them anyway. So everything we import is going to be a classic just by that alone. But they're in good shape and there's, that's the reason why. It's because of the inspections. They did make left-hand drive versions of these, usually like in Costa Rica and like Germany-ish type places and stuff. But you can't be guaranteed that they're going to be in as good a shape as one you typically get from Japan. And the prices on them are fucking sky high too. Prices aren't cheap in Japan, but at least they're realistic and more in line with what they should cost. Short wheelbase one like this can get for pretty inexpensive. The four-door ones are much, are more money. A uh, five-speed manual will put your price up even higher. They're more desirable. And then the front and rear locking differentials is an option. Um, it seems like about 75% of the 70 series that I look at, and they come up somewhat often. You'll have like maybe three or four a week. Uh, the most of them seem to have the front rear locking differentials. That might not be a big difference to you, depending. Probably not. But if you want to be feature complete, then you can expect that. To also bump up the price a little bit. A lot of them will have high mileage too. This one being at 200, just over 280,000 kilometers. 
but that wouldn't scare me away. I wouldn't start worrying about things until probably about 300,000 kilometers, 350,000 kilometers. But you'll see some at auction that are like 500, 600,000 kilometers. As long as they've been maintained, Toyota diesel will go forever. Usually the Hilux pickup trucks with a 2.4 turbo diesel engines seem to have the highest mileage. If you want to talk expensive, turbo diesel Toyota Hilux pickup trucks. Probably because they end up as technicals in the Middle East. Convertible ones are the most rare in Japan, and they command a pretty high premium. So if you don't care about manual transmission, you can spend less money and get an automatic. I don't have any opinions on automatics because I like manual transmission so much that that's pretty much exclusively what I buy. But there's no shame in an automatic, it's just not for me. Cruiser behind us. And I'm pretty sure the FJ Cruiser was built to capitalize on the nostalgia for the FJ40. And the J being the chassis code and the F being the engine code. So for the FJ Cruiser, I'm sure the chassis code is something else because I think it's based off of a Forerunner, something like that. Highlander, maybe. A lot of guys like their FJ Cruisers. Never had any sort of interaction in comparing a J70 or J40 for that matter to a FJ Cruiser. So, but while the FJ Cruiser will have a lot of stylistic choices meant just to look like the FJ40, the 40 and the 70 look like that usually for specific sort of reasons. You know that in the newer ones because they still make the j70 and they still sell it especially in australia where these are really well loved um they changed the front end because they ended up wanting to put a v8 diesel i don't know the reputation of that but in order to do that they had to widen out the hood so the new land cruisers don't have the fenders anymore or round headlights which i think it's kind of a bummer but Actually, cruiser.
show you these indicator lights. So, put it in four high. <laughs> so that's that. And then if you do diff lock, see these lights light up to let you know that your locks are diffed. Or <laughs> differentials are locked. We certainly don't want to do that on the pavement. Put it back in high. There we go. Yeah, I'm just going to say the same shit over again if I say anything, so. It's a little too serious for me. Rugger was a bit more unique and fun. This is, I feel like a chump driving this thing to go get groceries.